Okay, and some LGA775 overclocking once again. I went through some CPUs quite recently that I purchased from eBay and other websites. Uh, I first tested like E2140s, E2180s, E2200s, but I couldn't find good enough CPU that could challenge the top scores. Now, I've been some uh, E4500s and I found one that's pretty good if you ask me. Very reasonable FSP and the core itself is definitely strong. So I think this CPU could have pretty good chances to break the top scores in the uh, given benchmarks that we usually run with these old platforms like SuperPi, PyFast, W Prime, CPU-Z validation. So let's give it a go. So uh, it, the setup itself is pretty much the same as always. So Rampage Extreme Team Finland Edition Kimping Cooling F1 Dark Container with the pink thermal paste as I'm running quite low on KPX. Two sticks of Corsair Dominator GDX2 memory, bin by Samo CX or Tapacar. NVIDIA 6500 GT just for the monitor, signal with capture card as always. And C Sonic Prime 1300W Platinum. So Windows XP and Server 2003 as always. So I'll start in Windows XP with W Prime. So uh, let's hope for the best. Let's see how this goes container itself is still in its original state. I haven't done the tapping notification, so the initial pull-down will be relatively slow. So uh, I'll cut off the video for that part, obviously, and I will meet you again inside the operating system when I have some actual numbers to show. But yeah, let's see how this goes. Okay, I have a feeling that's the new top score with just one attempt. I need to check, so it was 14, 9, Yeah, 15, 0, 23 by some American guy, but this is quite flaky. Only 1.88 on the vehicle at the moment, minus 150. Okay, we could try 1024 at the same speed. This is uh, probably over 100 megahertz higher than uh, the current rank one score in 1024 amps, so will be turf. Okay, that's pretty interesting. So we managed to do 1024 amp top score with just one attempt at the same frequency, so 5.17 gigahertz, 476.484 seconds. The previous top score was by the same American guy at 499.776778, something like this, so just shy under 500 seconds. So this is like 23 second improvement, which is huge. But of course, the frequency difference is quite large, so 5.17 gigahertz versus uh, 5022 megahertz so this is close to 150 megahertz increase on the cpu clock speed so definitely good but the uh, signal for that stuff will be a bit a question mark anyways after this so at least we got the w primes for now i kept the cpu at minus 154 degrees during the test and now i'm idling at minus 151. i could try 5.2 W Prime 32 very quickly. I increased the vehicle of 1.96 from 1.87. So let's see what happens. Five two. It's a good thing it's actually the core, but relatively bad scaling from the temperatures, if you ask me. Should be 14.7, I think. So why do we hold on, stuck in the storm? 
Okay, 1847. Huge. <laughs> we are almost one second faster than the previous top score by tag. Closing in, that is. <sighs> Pretty wicked. Okay, over 200 millisecond gain over previous rank 1 score made by TAG from Austria. 10.734 seconds, my run is 10.516. He ran the CPU at 5.241, I ran the CPU at 5.310. And we are like 110 megahertz away from the top frequency, so we could actually try it right now. It will be tough, it will be the toughest of these all, of these tests, I mean. I don't even know what step. So it's 5, 4, 24, FSB 493.15. Will be very tough. Yeah. Let's see what happens. This is not the first time you actually have to post and boot the frequency you wish to validate. So 5.4, 33.75, previous top score by tag from Austria at 5.4, 24.69. So that's like 9 megahertz increase, whatever. I think we should have it. Yeah, 5.4, 33. <laughs> This is stupid, so could I run something? Like really? This is stupid if I can just post and boot this setting. Absolutely stupid if you ask me. Probably crashed. Okay guys, this is huge. Now I don't know if this really, uh, this CPU is an Allendale CPU, but I think the 4000 series CPU should be Allendale, even though they are labeled Conroe by CPU-Z. Look at that result. SuperPi 32M, 9 minutes, 12.766 at uh, a bit over 5.3 GHz on the CPU, monster clocks on the memory, 1930 almost, 664, 18, 57, common rate 1, Rampage Extreme, 1301 BAUS, previous top score by TAG from Austria at 9 minutes, 49.672, so this is like 37 second improvement, over half a minute faster than TAG, this is huge. I think he only ran like 5060 megahertz on the CPU. So uh, ben uh, benchmarking wise, this CPU is an absolute monster. <sighs> yeah, I'm pretty much speechless. I could still try a bit more on the validation with the boot method, but yeah. And okay, that went phenomenally good. So uh, I first thought the CPU wouldn't be that good because the temperature scaling didn't seem that awesome. But after a while of running this CPU, at least the single for that stuff was absolutely enormous. The W Prime 32 could be a tiny bit better. I think the best run was like 14.8 something. I'm sure I can do at least 4.7 something, but it's already like 200 milliseconds faster than the previous top score made by that American guy. Like close to 200 milliseconds. 1024M, I think it was like a 23 second improvement. So like 476 versus 499 something. That's already a quite huge increase from the previous rank one score, like well over 20 seconds. That doesn't happen that often. At 
and that was like at 5.17 i'm sure i could run it at above 5.2 which would be even faster but yeah i rather use the rema remaining ln2 on something else then the signal for this stuff was absolutely interesting for some reason the cpu had the best performance when i booted the frequency i wanted to run like the validation best outcome was when i actually booted that frequency i wanted to validate so boot 5433 open cpu z press f7 done and just validate it on the website and it works so uh, yeah pretty interesting so 9 megahertz gain in the maximum cpu z core frequency validation pi fast i think my best run was like 18.4 something so like 0.8 seconds faster than the previous rank one score made by tag from austria 1m i didn't try higher than 10.516 i'm sure i could do at least like 10.4 something because I almost passed that run at, five, well, at, all, at over 5.4, which is kind of stupid if you ask me. That would be like 10.3 in the 10.3 category probably. So uh, yeah, pretty enormous. 32M was definitely the biggest highlight of this whole session. So a whopping 37 second gain in the best uh, SuperPi 32M score for the Intel. Is it called to duo? E4500, I think it's e called to do or not Pentium. So if it's really an Allendale, it definitely outperforms any other Allendale CPU like the E2160, E2180 whatsoever. So this is absolutely enormous. I think my fastest E4600 run was 9 minutes 28 point something. So this is definitely faster, although this is a lower tier CPU. So my binning kind of works on ambient cooling that is so uh, yeah i will upload these scores on hardwarebot.org straight away and they will be up there once you are watching this video so uh, please give this video a thumbs up if you really like to see my huge effort on these older platforms lga 775 1366 and now even 1156 so uh, there aren't that many people out there in the community who really love these old platforms. There are just a few guys who really push these. I think it's now it's only mainly me and Tag. Noxinite from the UK has kind of partially disappeared. Obscure Paradox also kind of partially disappeared, although he still is in the community, at least works in the, interest, in the industry. And the masterpiece of them all, Samo CX, kind of retired, although he might be a fancy hangaround in some of these events. So uh, it's mostly me versus tag. So uh, yeah, huge journey if you ask me all these runs. So he, from here I will move on to some other CPU models. So yeah, definitely check out the scores on hardwarebot.org if you are interested in this course. Please subscribe to my channel and maybe check out my Patreon page as well if you want to join my Discord channel, if you want to chat with me directly. And if you just want to support my work overall with these older platforms and with this whole uh, overclocking hobby, pretty much. So, uh, yeah. So, thanks for watching some of my amazing legacy overclocking content once again. And I will see you on the next one.